Hello, Josh Johnson here with the weather discussion for March 15th, 2021. And to say there's a lot going on would be a pretty big understatement. So let's get straight to the maps here. A pretty significant episode of severe thunderstorms is likely to unfold across Alabama on Wednesday and into Wednesday night. This could potentially include tornadoes, large hail, damaging wind. Some of these tornadoes could be intense, EF2 or greater. Some of them could be on the ground for a long time. It's that kind of day. So um, inevitably, we'll get questions. Will this be like April 27th? Will this be like the day Beauregard got hit? Will this be like the day Enterprise got hit? The answer to those questions is always no. No two events are the same. This is an event that is serious enough that you need to take it seriously. You need to do some preparing. And what do you need to do? It's actually pretty simple. You need to have multiple reliable ways of getting weather warnings. The good news is we make one of those free of charge available to you. It's the WSFA First Alert weather app. It'll send alerts to your phone based on your location. Just download it, allow it to use your location. Second one is a NOAA weather radio. That is a great backup option for if and when cell networks. Uh, go out, your cell phone itself, maybe the battery dies. That weather radio can be the difference between uh, life and death. That's not a, that's not me saying that. That's people who have had it save their life saying that. So multiple ways of getting warnings. Know ahead of time where you'll go if you go under a tornado warning. Um, lowest floor, basement or storm shelters, best, hallway, bathroom, or closet. Um, if you live in a mobile home, you can't stay there. I like to use the five-minute rule. If you live in a mobile home and it takes you more than five minutes to reach your nearest safe, sturdy structure, then you need to leave when a tornado watch is issued. Not Don't wait on the warning. Let's go when the watch is issued. That can be a nearby business that's open 24-7, a gas station, a hotel, something like that. It can be a family member, a friend, a neighbor, anything. If you can get there in five minutes or less, you can stay in your mobile home until the tornado warning leaves, then you then is issued, then you got to go. If it takes you more than five minutes to get to that safe spot, you need to be out uh, when the tornado watch gets issued, in my opinion. So let's get to the maps. Um, So this is a messy scenario because there is a low-end severe weather risk today and tomorrow. This is 7 p.m. off the NAM, and it's really important as you look at these maps, and you are going to see these things posted all over creation over the next couple of days by a lot of meteorologists. Please keep this in mind. The environment only matters if there are thunderstorms in it. Sometimes we get maps with these big bullseye, nasty, significant tornado parameter bullseyes, but there's no storms in them. So what I'm going to do is walk you through the latest run of the high-res NAM and understand it's one run of one model. It'll change, but this is the idea. So this is 7 o'clock tonight. You'll notice the environment over west central Alabama is mildly supportive of rotation. This is the significant tornado parameter above one favors some tornadoes above three to four. You start to get up here, uh, four, five, six, that favors some large tornadoes. So this is Monday evening tonight. Not a lot of storms though in that part of the state where the, the parameters are good for tornadoes. So the threat is minimal to this evening for a brief tornado. It's not zero, but it's low. Here's Tuesday morning. Not much to this. Um, Very, very low-end supportive environment in the southwestern corner of Alabama. You have some storms down here, but most of them are riding north of a retreating warm front. So we will watch these to see how they interact with that warm front, but I'm not overly concerned about the tornado threat Tuesday morning either. So here's Tuesday evening. You've got storms over central Alabama as the warm front lifts north. This is 7 o'clock Tuesday. We will watch for any rotation on the southern flank of this. Any of these storms that can become rooted in a layer of warmer air near the surface along that warm front would need to be watched. Okay, here's Wednesday morning. So initially, not much is happening. You'll notice big time numbers back over Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi. Um... Not much going on in Alabama. Some kind of nuisance-style showers. Most of the storms with the warm front are north of us. That is something we will be watching, by the way. How far north does that warm front go? Because Wednesday morning, there will be storms along that warm front. Um, The latest guidance suggesting those are north of us, but we'll we'll take kind of a wait-and-see approach on that. Okay, so there is Wednesday morning. Now, here's Wednesday afternoon. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, you start to get some... Uh, significant tornado values up around uh, two to four. But again, do you have any storms in this environment? No, you probably don't. So the model here hints at some showery development Wednesday afternoon. Now, one of the big questions about this event uh, will be, what do these actually look like? Remember, a model is just a guess. It's a scenario. So 
understand that it may not look like this. And if these storms can become intense and maintain updrafts, the overall environment, um, as mentioned, there, there's some there's some issues there. The environment is supportive of tornadoes. That's Wednesday afternoon. Here is Wednesday evening's environment, and that uh, that uh, strong tornado environment, uh, significant tornado parameter values up in, above three to five now, across a big chunk of central, uh, north, northwest Alabama, and back into Mississippi. And oh, look at that! There are thunderstorms in that environment. There, these could be thunderstorms as well. For now, the model kind of hints at more just sort of nuisance-style showers. But if those can uh, maintain their updrafts and become intense, then they'll they'll rotate too. Now the, the the problem is, and this is why we often tell you to wait for more information. The model that I'm able to use to show you simulated radar and the, these these sorts of high resolution details, it only goes out 60 hours. So we can only go out right now through Wednesday evening. Now later today and tonight we will get new data and we'll be able to go out deeper in time and take a deeper dive into this. So understand that that's, that's sort of the, the, the thinking there. Now we do have some lower resolution data. This is the low res NAM that goes out a little deeper. This would be um, one o'clock in the morning and uh, you'll notice the environment is supportive of tornadoes over here into uh, West Alabama. And this sort of just makes its way across the state. Uh, as we go through the overnight hours, there's at 72 hours, you've still got uh, values up above one to three into the eastern counties. Here is the Storm Prediction Center's outlook. We use different colors and words than they do. And there are about five people that complain about that on Facebook. And there are thousands and thousands who don't complain and just understand it. So. Um, and, and that's fine. That's everyone's right. Everyone gets to say what they want to say. Um, it, this is the same forecast as the Storm Prediction Center. We, use, we just use different colors and words, very low, low, medium, and high. We do that because of research that we conducted and that the Weather Enterprise has conducted. So the overall idea here is if you draw a fence, and, and please listen up on this part because this is, this is very important. If you draw a fence in this red area, somewhere inside that fence, there are going to be problems. Not everywhere inside that fence are there going to be strong tornadoes or tornadoes at all, but somewhere inside that fence there could be. So that's how we've got to think about these risk areas. You have to think of them like a fence. Um, inside the fence, there will be pockets of problems that develop. Not everywhere, but there will be some. Um, and the SBC has drawn a hatched area. See the little black hatch marks that includes most of our area? That's the area where they believe there could be not just tornadoes, but strong tornadoes, tornadoes EF2 intensity or greater. So that's their forecast kind of relayed in our words and colors there. So we think this is a fairly substantial severe weather risk that will unfold across Alabama Wednesday into Wednesday night. I have no ability to tell you what will happen where you live. I can tell you that you have a risk. I can tell you that you need to be ready. That's the limit of the science of meteorology. I can't tell you there will be a tornado on the north end of Millbrook at three in the morning. If I knew that, I'd be going door to door right now, getting people out and getting them to shelter. I don't know that. Um, so that's, the, that's sort of what we know right now. We will get new data tonight. We will get new data tomorrow. You will see more of these videos. You will see a lot of videos from me and the rest of our weather team over on the WSFA First Alert weather app. I encourage you again, like I did at the beginning of the video, if you don't have it already, get it. All right, I'm going to go shave, your TV ready, and uh, also eat some lunch with my lovely wife. So I'm going to knock that out. I'll be into work momentarily. Uh, I'll do a Facebook Live this evening. Be watching for that. We'll probably do that around 5.30. Probably do another one when the uh, evening model data comes out too. So two more Facebook Lives. A host of app videos. You can watch uh, my forecasts on TV at 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10 on WSFA 12 News. Watch the website for updates to WSFA.com. Uh, we'll post a new discussion there this afternoon as well. Take care, everyone. Hope you all have a wonderful Monday. I'll see